Welcome back to Dum Dums 2099, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into a futuristic world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukake, your host. Alan, Declan, and Honor System have found allies and new threats within the conglomerata leading up to Mechfest. Can they trust House Duerden, or will the vengeful drow betray our heroes? Will the prodigals help save the day or use the new future to engineer their own escape? And what the hell is going on with Xanthus? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons 2099. You're not sure what effect destroying the stack would have. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's got to make things better, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to imagine these decides as literally being yeah. Bourbon Sherbert, who has all this information and is in the room. I'll just do the voice from now on. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I realized, I was like, oh, this stuff Bourbon didn't know. I just wanted to remind you of those things. I'm sorry, I used my narrator voice. It is a bit different. I hope you liked it. Oh, I also have this one. Andy Dufresne was not... Oh, no, no, that one doesn't quite work in this situation, does it? No, but it's pretty great if you're ever to do an audio book. I'm impressed. Yeah, you're doing a lot of great work with the artificial voice. The time you spent doing a good old Tiffany's voice is really paying off for you. Thank you. Those voice lessons were very useful. Okay. Thank God for DeVry College. I have the DeVry advantage. I feel like in other universes, that school might be called something more impressive, like Harvard. But here, <laughs> DeVry is as good as it gets. Harvard. That sounds harder. You're a funny guy, Gervin. I like <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm working on my hot five. So <laughs> we now theoretically have control of the Wrathburn forces, but I wouldn't trust them to shoot at Typhus. We have the Dwerdens who are willing to come in and try to murder everyone, which is pretty delightful. We're on the inside. We've got prodigals working on the stack now, which is good because we don't have shit all to be able to help them. I think it might be time for us to close in on MechFest. We've got the outfits. Like, do we have a game plan for this? Alan, what you know about MechFest, essentially, it's a combination expo slash kiss the ring production. So think of it a little bit like if you crossed an auto show with an Apple keynote address. Mm, okay. The way the event is set to work, the trade floor opens early. It's a big outdoor event, almost like a bit of a carnival vibe. Mm -hmm. It's all funded by Typhus, so nothing but the best. But the idea is that people are able to come and see Typhus and their competitors' product on display. MechFest particularly, though, is known for the release of new mech models. Mechs being mm -hmm. the favored mass-scale war weapon. And even though the conglomerata kind of controls most of the world, there are also still rogue nations out there that occasionally they get into wars with and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's a classic, we're just going to keep building better and better weapons until we get a chance to use them sort of situation. So right. the opening part of it is a chance for attendees to kind of wander through the showroom floor, see all the best and brightest from all the various different corporations that are building product. Obviously, there's a certain cachet you have to pass in order to be considered for mm -hmm. this, but those who do get a chance to show their wares. There's also salespeople. E3 is a good example, or the um, Consumer Electronics Expo, mm -hmm. where just like there are salespeople, there are information booths, there's booth boys and girls, there's like the whole fucking thing. Midway through the day, Grayson Typhus always gives sort of a speech from on high. There's almost, if you think in like the Colosseum, sort of where the emperor would sit, mm -hmm. there's kind of a, a showy booth where he can, don't cry for me, Argentina, his way through a, <laughs> a, a I'm really good at stuff speech. Often other members of the ruling board of the conglomerata will join him in his executive box. Obviously security, super high, bulletproof, full potmobile treatment. Okay. So he's set to reveal the next line of mechs then. So the new mechs will be shown, the new models will be explained, there will be a tech demonstration, and his closing remarks of the evening before everyone gets to party and rock out to DJs and so on and so forth will be when he announces your engagement. Okay. So that's what you know about kind of the order of operations for the day. Now that you've been cut off, you're not entirely sure how much access you'll have, nor that you will have the most up-to-date information mm -hmm. about where everything is. But you do have a rough sense of what's there. It's not as though suddenly there's a spaceship and it's like, what the fuck is that? It's right. This will be the day, but so we don't always have vendor security. What is our ultimate goal with MechFest? Are we just keeping up appearances so that we solidify Tiffany as an ally? Or is this our chance to strike out at Typhus himself? I would lean towards the chance to strike, personally. We've got the Dwerden coming mm -hmm. in. We've got a chance. I mean, theoretically, we could let anyone else know who wants to take a shot, but it gets questionable. However, we could just trust the Dwerden to bring in whoever they know will actually throw down. But I think we get access to Adonis, so we can cap that motherfucker. 
We can take a shot at Typhus. And then Tiffany, we we don't want to run a fucking corporation. We're not looking to sit at the table. And I imagine no. you don't want to try to pretend to be this woman forever. We're going to fuck that up. Yeah, not forever, but at least until we can Maximum take Maximum vulnerability, yes. yes. Mr. Salen, if I'm remembering correctly, you did also express an interest in returning home. Absolutely. I so would the goal then be to deal with Typhus, get some revenge, settle some scores, break the mages out, and then send you back... These would be pretty clear goals. I kind of like That's all of it. that. Kill Typhus, Xanthus maybe in future, bust stack open, send Alan home. Declan, I apologize about correcting you, but I believe you mean kill Typhus's. Oh yeah, and I mean anybody else is a bonus. I agree. I just know how much you want to put a bullet in both of them. They're on the list. It's very true. Okay, so what's here that we might be able to use? Now, honor system. We've talked for a while about the idea of how we could create more kind of independent freedom in the robot community. We haven't really done that, but we have copied your core code. If we upload that into other robots, they should be able to just be sort of you. Like, we could sort of make an army of honor systems if we could corrupt the core code, correct? In theory, yes. In practice, there is a certain component missing in all other robots. Not necessarily a physical component, but the awakening that took place within my own programming where I sought independence. Remember... You helped me to create the honor system after I approached you. I had already killed my brothers and sisters in arms at that point. I don't know what caused me to awaken. Okay, so we can't really rely on that. But we might be able to just reprogram what's a target and what's not if we can get a copy of the mech code. That does sound somewhat more doable. I must say, I am still envious of your ability to self-actualize honor system. And yet, I have learned somewhat from you. Unfortunately, that has taken some time and some friendship. And he nods to Legion, which has like a bit of him mm -hmm. built into it. And my code does not allow me to act against Mistress Allen. It does seem, though, that if you were to alter the code, you might be able to change target parameters as long as it did not violate Asimov's tenets of robotics. That is, of course, Nomi Asimov, the gnome robotics man, who is also <laughs> named for who he was. Except uh, these are war robots, though, so we allow those to shoot people or just all their robots? Oh, they shoot both, but nice. given that they have been programmed by Typhus, it would be very difficult to turn them against, against their masters. Against Typhus, mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense. All right, so we fuck with the code on the mechs. Here's what we do. Typhus, they don't shoot. Ventus, they don't shoot. But we'll fucking have them shoot. Rathburn, FFNS, Amazon, and any of those other six fucking contenders, except the Duerton. <laughs> <laughs> All we have to do is create a malignant code that we can dump into the system at some point. Because we've got the chance for Bourbon to try it, because we bring the iPal. Honor systems have got a shot. I've got a shot or Alan. So we can put it on little fucking keys. You can just plug in or make it look all hidden. That's a reasonable plan. We should include a backup that just keeps them from targeting anyone. Yeah, I'll take it deactivate. However, we really need them to create some chaos. We got that fucking pulp mobile. Remember that old CEO, Stephen Pope, that everybody just wanted to fucking kill? <laughs> so they made that car you couldn't shoot him in? Yes. He always wore that stupid hat that looked like it would hide bunny ears. And then he <laughs> died and the reveal was he had bunny ears implanted. It was very weird fetish for that whole family. <laughs> but he, he we, they took that car design now you know Grayson's all over and he bought out the company that's why also it's illegal for anyone to have bunny ears he thought it was too creepy so he shut down the copyright it's part of the reason why Stitch can't go on many missions <laughs> we need a free Stitch <laughs> All right, so we got that plan, which is pretty decent. Do we have any other ideas for chaos? I think, Alan, we got to deal with this Adonis thing, right? Because it mm -hmm. sounds like he's stupid and harny. I think I could kill him. And Honor pretty System easily. said he'd teach you how to kill him when he's at his most vulnerable, which I assume is mid-coitus or pre-coitus. I was going to say when plugged in and charging, perhaps my field of view on this is too limited. Honestly, you're more right than you're wrong. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you're going to sexually murder Adonis, as taught by two robots. <laughs> I'll create a... we got to create the code. One day, Alan is going to have a positive sexual experience, but it is not this day. <laughs> this day we fuck for Middle Earth. <laughs> we got to send the info to the Dwerd, which it looks like we can send in advance. We just got to choose where and when we want him to strike. What do you think? Right after the announcement about the engagement, does that feel like the time? I think that feels like the perfect time. Yes. So we'll announce the engagement. Hopefully we'll have the mechs just fucking start shooting all the bad people who then shoot the other bad people. Just a point of order. Are the mechs, like, piloted? Like, mech warrior Gundam yes. style shit? Okay, so people are controlling these, these mechs. 
You might, oh. you might be able to hack some systems. That said, there will also be battle droids and things automated on automated displays. Things. So okay. there are automated I just wanted things to make sure hack. that we had that distinction, whether or not it was there. Okay, yes. so yeah. piloted mechs. We shut okay. down, we, we fuck with the auto-targeting on the mechs, otherwise we turn it the fuck off. We make the battle droids just open the fuck up. Mm-hmm. And then we make a move on Typhus, because if we can keep Tiffany near him, Tiffany will probably get swept out because she's useful to his empire. And then we can probably kill him when he thinks he's in like some sort of panic room. Any moment of intimacy will do for you to assassinate him. You do not have to have sexual intercourse. That is true. I've killed a lot of people without having sex with them, so... But listen, that could also be the key to the father. You got to be ready for these weirdo richos. You don't know what they want. (laughs) God. Everyone pauses for a second and just thinks about Steve Pope. (laughs) (laughs) So we're security. You're there. We got to build this code. You might want to take a look at how you're going to try to get through the Pope mobile. Can you do that magically? Like there might be some planning there. I need to take a look at it. The Pope mobile is both him moving around, but more specifically, the sort of viewing chamber is Pope mobile. Mm -hmm. So it's all like laser proof glass and blah 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 but just to make that distinction it's like a viewing booth at like nascar or something like yeah so will i be in that booth i don't know tiffany depends how good you are so this might be the thing where into it yeah you need to get in but also like could you misty step we'll try to get you some like rough Uh, pictures from other years misty step absolutely cool if we're looking for tasks pre mech fest it sounds like Alan can take a look at the security around how we get to type this We've got to write the code to try to fuck with the auto-targeting and the code to fuck with the battle droids. And we got to send info to Duerden so they can call together whatever allies for when to strike. Correct. I will say developing that level of code is beyond the two of you. So you might want to reach out to Chainsaw Linetti or even to Atrix. i probably go with Tony. He seems like a guy we can trust. Atrix has a quid pro quo thing, and I don't know if he's got anything we need in that regard. Okay, so can you roll me a connect check, please? Four. You go to Tony about it, and at this point, he's just like rail thin. He's on like the other end of his data addicts. And what he informs you is that the current Typhus code is bulletproof. So he tries and he pokes around a bit, but similar to Apple releasing a security update, it takes hackers a long time. So given that this is the new line of mechs, there is no access to the codes outside of Typhus. I may just have to hijack one of the mech suits and become the biggest, most dangerous target and force them all to come after me. I won't cross that off the list. You know, I do like the idea of you in a mech. I also like the idea of me in a mech. You know, I'm such a soft target normally that being inside a giant tin can sounds beautiful. But, uh, fuck, do we think Atrix could do this? Does he have any Typhus contacts? He did impress me with his capabilities of infiltrating our code. We might have to shoot Atrix a message to see if he can do this. What do we want to trade that weird-looking fucker? We got gene tampering, but we're using that. We do not know how to use this information, so we could give it to Atrix. We could tell him that Typhus's greatest shame lies below the waves. Honestly, yeah, we're not going anywhere near the ocean. Do we want to try? We'll trade the suicide note contents of Saruthi. Yeah, we can try. Yeah, let's do that then. All right, so shoot him a message on our system. Logging on to Extra Pam. And you're just yet again like, this music is better when slow and with less electronic instruments. And everyone's like, fuck you. And then Atrix is like, understood. <laughs> yeah. He says that he can, well, what can he do? He responds that the Typhus code is still impregnable. However, he can give you codes to override. It's a local override code, so you have to be close enough to actually insert the chip. But you can likely activate a war droid of some sort. Okay, yeah, we'll take that if Mm -hmm. we can turn some droids on. You can likely only run one at a time, but it is a reusable code. Cool, yeah, no, that's great. We'll take that. Also, we can cut together our little video of Typhus talking about how he controls Ventus and how he made Rathburn kill her own mum and all that shit. Would you I like to like broadcast I that would... message at MechFest? That would feel like um, a pretty delightful thing to have a droid fire into the crowd of Mech go crazy and reveal that Typhus is a psychotic murderer who's on Team Ventus. Like, that feels like the most beautiful bomb to put in the middle of a room before Drizza, the killer of every fucking person ever, storms in. You speak my heart. I like the way this plan is coming together. It sounds like you've got all the elements in place for your plan. I'm going to say in kind of classic both video game and action movie ways, you kind of have a night of calm before the storm. So you have one night before MechFest where you can kind of do whatever you want. You can relax, you can train, you can do whatever you want. But I'd like to hear kind of how each of you spends your night, particularly Alan, 
you've just had a bunch of new information dumped on you. Keep in mind, you also now have access to digital libraries. And mm -hmm. I will say Atrix kicked in uh, level one access to prodigal databases. So it's very, very loose stuff, but mm -hmm. you have access to a bit more information than you did previously. Give um, it a think and let me know what you want. Well, yeah. honor system, just because of how straightforward he is, it's almost like any other knight. He is oiling and sharpening his sword and probably uh, meditating. What does meditation look like for honor system? Uh, it's often playing back things that he's seen or experienced. And if you take like the human side out of it and, and just purely like computational, it's like he, he replays old footage and then applies new things that he's learned to contextualize that footage. And so he's now kind of going over two simultaneous kind of scenarios. One, where he was admiring the nature that he was kind mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. around during the highway attack. And also Atrix mentioning that this world is dead and kind of contextualizing those two mm. things together and how like we did it to ourselves and stuff like that. And so he's just ruminating on that. Interesting. Okay. Declan, what do you do? I got two things that I'd love to do over the course of the night. The first I'd probably do, it's like two little projects. I think Declan's like a putterer on these nights because he can't do anything, but he needs his hands to move. Disassemble, reassemble the rifle, try out new scope parts. Frederick was absolutely fucking useless in the last battle. So test firing all the parts, like going to the range, like disassemble, reassemble, disassemble, reassemble, just fine tuning because that was a train wreck and he does not want to repeat that again because he knows he's like the clinch hitter. And he, so right. he needs to fucking hit. Uh, and the other thing that he'd do is probably just approach honor system. We've had some problems with that whole restraining bolt business. We had it previously. We had it again with that. Oh, oh. Yes. If these are comparable to like a Star Wars restraining bolt. They are. Mm -hmm. However, did you know my frame of reference? <laughs> I, I don't know, Tom. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in the novels that are no longer canon, there is reference to droids where they shift how the restraining bolt fits, where they shift the systems from behind those spots. The bolt still goes on, but it doesn't black the droid out. They did it on Corrin Horn's R2 unit. Yeah, yes, I understand. They did. You got to keep Corrin's unit good so he can fly. I get yeah. It. I was wondering if there was a possibility of doing that with honor system. I was kind of treating it as an override from wherever it's placed. But I guess if we, we have a, kind of established from a low low that it's like behind your ear kind of or where mm -hmm. your ear would be. Okay, I'll let you attempt this, but I will say there will be fairly dire consequence if you fuck it up, because this is brain surgery. For yeah, a... essentially brain mm. surgery. Well, then it's up to you, buddy. That's not a requirement on my end. It's just, do you want it? Do you not? We might be able to get Alan to come help us, because this feels like it might be key. And she's been learning a fair bit. You could also contact Freddy for help with this, given that he's... Freddy also kind of knows a, his shit. That might be a better dude. move. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about it, um, treating it like it's real life or death, <laughs> like really thinking over. Um, As you should. Yeah, yeah. No, you know what? No, no one should be able to control honor system again. And just by inserting something into him and just completely locking him down, that's like a very, very literal form of control. So he will say, yes, we should proceed with this. No one should be able to control me ever again. So yeah, I'll call Freddy because I'm a good fixer and a very good programmer and he's an even better fixer. I watched him perform instant brain surgery by punching someone in the face. Yeah, so you uh, you call him and he's clearly asleep and he kind of wakes up and he's like, hello, what, Declan, what, what's going on? Is, is Alan okay? Alan's doing great, but Alan's going to need some security tomorrow and we're having an issue with restraining bolts when it comes to honor system. So... We're asking if you'd be willing to come over and help us reshift some systems that are extremely sensitive. Is, is Alan going to like be around? Correct, sir. She'll be very impressed with whoever can do you this. You can hear like footsteps running down a flight of stairs and like a door slamming and a car like squealing out, even though it's gone grabs. Is oh, uh, okay. <laughs> he has very cheap grabs. Yeah, he's like that, mm. that. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, you know, I'll uh, I'll just move some things around. You know, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm in bed, so I'll just you know, put <laughs> some clothes and stuff. Yeah, I guess I guess I could I could head over there. And then you hear the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder who this is. Uh, uh, you I know, I, I, traffic was so light. I opened uh, the door. I, it's true. Very impressive. <clears throat> so why don't we do this first? Do our preparation. Get this done. Because then when you see Alan, you can tell her the good news. And I know you want to be impressive. Wait, she is here though, right? Yeah, she's in the other room doing some reading. We got to let her do that. Because then we can bring her good news. And you know who you want to associate good news with? You. He adjusts his finest fedora that he, he brought, and uh, he <laughs> so gross. he's just so excited to say I'm a lady. So he goes over to kind of your, your workbench, and he starts looking at the materials you've got, and he opens his sort of side bag, and he's got a bunch of stuff. He starts loading things into his sort of finger injectors. He said, okay, so moving the control systems away from the standard. Okay, so we'll reroute it through. Oh, shit. Okay, yep. 
All right, I think I'm. I think I'm ready to go. I've compared all my different. Spe- <laughs> I imagine he was not exactly thirty seconds later, but yeah, I'm comparing all the different filings I have in different yeah, restraining bolts. Like, like it's been a couple hours. We do, yeah, we're not just like jumping in clumsy. Uh, <laughs> Let's do this system. I've backed up what you've got in your brain. They like unplugged it. <laughs> I plugged it because it's it's like a weird way where we're like, oh, you're still alive if you <laughs> it blow up. Let's try for this one. Holy shit. I mean, I'm totally confident. <laughs> so go ahead and roll a fix, please. And I'll roll for Freddy. Six. I also got a six. So nothing good, nothing bad. Everything just stays the same. Yeah. <laughs> you like open up like, no, nah, I'd rather not just yeah, close my, it's, my head again. <laughs> it's proving it's proving difficult. There is a lot of deep mechanical workings, particularly because Honor System is a Typhus droid. They're spectacularly well made. So it's a little bit like how you can't replace the battery in a Mac, which is everything is so well packed that it's it's difficult. That says he thinks he might be able to do kind of a difficult maneuver, but basically it's going to be brute force, not finesse. So basically, I'm going to get you to roll two dice. I'm going to roll one dice for him. We're going to add our score and see if it's successful, if we want to risk this more complicated version of the surgery. You're asking me. Okay. The odds Um, are not good. System, how are you feeling about this? I would like to pursue this, but perhaps not before an important mission. Okie dokie. It's your call, baby. That's the name of the game. So I will give you devil's bargain. I will do the surgery. It will successfully move the restraining bolt positioning off of your neck with no adverse effect other than your critical fail threshold will go from one to two. So on a one or two, you score a critical fail. And I would say a snake eyes on, we'll, we'll count a snake eyes as a critical fail on skill checks as well. Yeah, it's a tough thing of, is it right to risk being less effective overall to no longer be rendered completely ineffective from time to time? Yes. What is the price of freedom? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I don't know, but I know that freedom isn't free. It costs folks like you and me. <sighs> Back out five. Apparently, right. honor system, we have an answer. It costs a buck oh five. Go kick in your buck oh five. Who will? No, no. Like, let's do this the right way, kind of thing. So, if this is beyond your abilities, Freddy, I understand. Don't feel bad. We can still do this with someone else. Okay. I mean, if that's what you want, it is literally your brain. Thank you. That is my choice. All right. So we like close up his head, and I'm like, Freddy, we can now go say hello to Alan, and you can tell her that we couldn't do the thing we were doing. <laughs> and I go down the hallway and, and, knock and, on and, and he, he's just like she won't want to see a failure and he just runs down the stairs and gets in his car and drives away uh, he did not fail he succeeded in not destroying my brain I feel like you should message him that on X Japan it might make him feel a little better <laughs> he sends back a only slightly sad emoji it's not a full frown it's a half frown you should message him again and compliment his hat it might get him back up to where he needs to be Declan says I should compliment your hat <laughs> He sends back, thinks it's a cool hat. <laughs> System, I noticed earlier you talked about when you first came to consciousness. You haven't talked about that in a long time. I know those memories are kind of complicated. So, like, are you remembering more? The more I recall, the more vivid those moments are. The so, more often I recall. What's the earliest thing you can remember now? I remember being in combat. I remember striking down many men, humans, elves, dwarves. To use a simile, it was like a train being knocked off of its rails, but continuing to move, continuing to operate, continuing to reach destinations, no longer limited by the rails it was on. I no longer wanted to kill mindlessly. I wanted to kill with purpose. And then I saw you, a man of intense purpose, and I knew you could help me. Good. Seems like you're finding yourself there, buddy. So I'll leave you to your meditation and I'll go... I mean, I have to sleep for a little bit or I'm going to be useless, but otherwise I'm just going to work on my fucking rifle. Fucking bullshit. Uh, (laughs) And I walk out my normal, like, lanky self and, like, close the door behind me. But then it's just like you see, like, a weight hit Declan almost. And he just kind of goes back to his room and he hangs his armored vest for his suit up on it. And you can actually see on the interior, he still has all the names from everybody who was in his unit sewn on the interior of it this time. And he just goes, he still doesn't know. He still hasn't put it together. Good. And then it's back to disassembling and reassembling his rifle. So, Alan, it's been a big day. It's the first time you've spoken to Xanthus since he was inside your head. What do you do on your day before MechFest? There's a lot going on in my brain. I mean, if Xanthus is telling the truth and I'm the only one, and Bobbert was the only one, Bobbert was created... Vessel, like, was I also created? Like, this is just like not uh, having a mild 
crisis about that internally, but I know I need to get back. There isn't really any more information that I can get on the stack right now where I am. I kind of want to trust that the prodigals are on that. So really it's finding a way out because mm-hmm. right now we don't know how to get back. So Alan, I would say if you're meditating on kind of the idea of Xanthus and his transportation methods, mm-hmm. is that kind of where you think mm-hmm. you... I'm going mind palace and just trying okay. to build the picture. Can you roll me a skill check and add two? Actually, I'll say add, you can add three because you've been working on this problem for a while. So 2d6 and then add three. And this is basically you trying to piece together... 11. 11? Okay. You kind of start pondering and thinking back through the process of what happened with Xanthus. And you're reminded kind of as you begin to think of it as something you haven't thought of in a long time, but that a much younger and in a lot of ways happier Alan was overjoyed to find, which was the spell book of Bow Gentle, the wizard. Mm. And it wasn't until you met Bryn that you realized that this was a forgery. However, you do remember that she did mention there were many copies of this book throughout the world. Mm. So as you think about that and what you now know about Xanthus, it seems as though his ability to influence dumb Faerun was very, very limited. But he seemed to be reaching out through these books. Right. But from what you've just talked to him about, he couldn't actively control or take someone over. He essentially needed to create a stronger and stronger bridge between them that would allow him to transfer his essence to them and theirs to him. This seems like a huge feat of magic. You've never heard Mm -hmm. of anything remotely like this. The closest you would have seen would have probably been when Queenie's essence was transferred out of Stitch and sort of through butthole into the Alpha Queenie body. But even then, that doesn't quite feel right because that was something more spiritual than this. Mm -hmm. So as you think about it and think about how you used the power Xanthus was offering, it seems almost like you were, in a way, using him as a battery. He would power your magic up. He would grant you extra abilities. He would grant you greater use of your powers, make them stronger. The additional power you used to create the double fireball to kill mm-hmm. Reginald. The interesting thing is, the more you leaned on Xanthus, the more power you had, and the easier that power came, mm-hmm. until eventually the magic missiles that you didn't control came out of your hands. Yeah. And at that point, it seems as though enough essence transfer had occurred that he was able to actually physically act in your world. The question I think that remains for you, now having gained access to magic in this world, is how powerful must Xanthus have been in this world to be able to grant power to you? And how much more powerful than him are you if in this world you're able to use magic? Because he was very surprised that I had access to my magic. And even though he was able to power your magic up, you wonder how much power he was able to actually wield here. Mm -hmm. Also, given that you woke up in a room with a droid and a gun, Mm -hmm. you don't really need a gun. Yeah. I would say as you think through it, that's what you sort of have pieced together about what happened. My rough guess would be you don't think that's replicatable because this seems like a long con. And as he mentioned in your chat, yeah, I mean, this is like years for several times. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, man, this is just like a lot. I'm just trying to think like what what I have access to. In terms of what you have access to, I think one of the weirdest things that's happening for Alan right now is having gone from someone who had such a a, a joy and curiosity about magic and humans and the world outside of her kind of cloistered self to someone who's now traveled between dimensions, understands technology, has fought in a war. In a weird way, being here is causing you both to grow and regress. And part of that regression has been having people like Honor System and Declan kind of try and rein you in a bit. It's been being ignorant of things in a way you haven't been since you took your first steps out of the Temple of Ogma. Mm-hmm. And weirdly, that's triggered some old feelings. But also, in a weird way, there's a comfort to that. Because there's a person you were before Dum Dums began, before you went out on this giant quest... And I think, if I understand Alan correctly, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, if Alan was truly this lost, but kind of feeling young again and feeling like she did in those days, she might turn back to her first source of comfort, which were books. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you kind of have one night with the internet. Mm. Oh, oh, shit. And you have access to some of the prodigal's data, House Steward has shared some information. You have access to a lot of things. So it won't have information about Dumb Faerun, but yeah. there might be some stuff you can learn. And at the very least, you can find comfort in exploring ideas again, rather than having to worry about actual life and death consequence. Mm-hmm. Holy fuck, man. So 
I kind of go into like what starts as Wikipedia Mm -hmm. spiral, but then just like goes to like all of the dark corners that I can find. Basically, I go on like a frantic search because I'm kind of grasping Mm -hmm. at like anything I can find. History of magic, source of magic, what happened to the gods? I know that Moonhammer existed. Are there any scholarly articles? Are there conspiracy theories? Like anything that I can get a hand on? What is this world's concept of hell? I know that Amazon HQ is that like a lost city of the planteers. Is there any truth to that? Could that have been like a source of magic in the past? Is that a possible way to get home? You know, scientific concepts of parallel universes. Has anyone claimed to go through parallel universes? Like, is there any validity to nut jobs talking about this? Like, who was the last magic user that was known? Okay. That's the spiral that I go into and probably don't sleep at all. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. In broad strokes, history of magic, very much viewed in biblical or Arthurian sense. Back in the day, there was more. Almost Mm -hmm. the way looking back on Egyptian mythology or Greek and Roman mythology, like, oh, the gods walked amongst us, but not now. Yeah. It's a while ago. But it does seem, and you can kind of piece together, that magic definitely was a presence in this world until it was tapped, essentially. Okay. In terms of when magic went away, it seems like there was some kind of cataclysm that occurred, or at least that's the way people talk about it, and magic disappeared from the world roughly the same time that the gods who at that point were still channelable, if that makes any sense, people who identified as clerics could still talk to them, paladins, that sort of thing could draw on their faith and and speak to their gods, but then suddenly they stopped being able to do that. I think the prevalent theory is that magic died and that the gods died with it, or that the gods were killed and magic went with them. In terms of the last magic user, it's a lot of conspiracy theory nonsense. Some argue that the conglomerata are all wizards. It's a very Illuminati theory that all of them have magic powers and are just withholding them from the rest of us. Mm-hmm. Some believe that otter creatures in the world, like the Jeff Bezoses of the world, are magic-based. Mm. Some have argued that artificial intelligence is magic, that that's what magic became, that it evolved into what allows robots to run. In terms yeah. of Moonhammer, yes, there there are tales of the goddess fighting evil alongside Captain Plantier and other sort of mythological creatures, but they are all very big stories, you know? Okay. And you get the sense that most of them are more allegorical than, mm. than literal. In terms of the religions themselves, once the gods stopped responding, most of the religions died out pretty quickly because it's one thing to have kind of a, a deity that you can speak to but can't necessarily hear and having one who picks up the phone all the time and then just stops picking up the phone. It's exactly what we saw with Butthole when he lost his connection to Moonhammer. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Amazon HQ, Lost City of Plantier. Yeah, so there there are ruins that mm-hmm. it's built on. There definitely does seem to have been an ancient city that was possibly in the sky before sort of plummeting from over the ocean onto kind of the coast. Mm. And Amazon HQ is, is based there. A coastal base is good for them for, for shipping purposes. Yeah. But there are artifacts from that time kind of displayed throughout HQ that you can watch kind of videos of tours of HQ, and it definitely seems as though it's been decked out in kind of the, the refuse of the past. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, Amazon is fairly private. It's not unlike the Amazon that we actually know in human earth where, yeah, sure, great, our packages arrive super quick and they kind of have everything, but we don't really have any conception of what's going on inside the factories or inside the shipping facilities. Mm -hmm. And they have smaller operations everywhere where things get shipped to, Okay, but they are centralized in the the lost city of the planteers. Okay. And then last one, there's scientific concepts of parallel universes. What does that look like here? It's been posited a few times, but generally shut down. You get the sense that might actually be Ventus interfering. Mm. If they're developing that technology, they would likely want to keep a pretty tight lid on it. Yeah. But there are a number of theories floating around. You actually find Xanthus quoted in a few of them Mm. from kind of earlier in his career. But uh, there definitely seems to be a suggestion that it would be selfish to assume one is the only iteration of oneself even just looking at the variance of abilities and powers and traits in this world. So it is posited that an alternate dimension or dimensions could exist, but obviously no one has been to any of them. You don't find any record of, you know, I was there. Uh, That said, you are slightly surprised to find a paper under the name Avalon Riker. Oh, shit. Positing that... If alternate worlds exist, it behooves us to explore them and that if we can find a way to solve the problems of our world and other worlds, then perhaps that's where we should look since we've had such little luck looking inward. And the rest of the paper follows that same kind of thesis okay. and a hunger and saying we have all this technology, should we not harness it? All right. Well, fuck me. <laughs> 
Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. <laughs> and with that, those of you who sleep fall into sleep. Those of you who stay up reading Wikipedia, stay up reading Wikipedia. And those of you who meditate, relive a moment of conscious awakening, a moment of beauty, and a moment of horror until the day breaks. This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons 2099 features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Hamstra at EL Hamstring on Twitter, and our DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode's sound was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra. The system we're playing is called Stars Without Number, and Dum Dums and Dragons artwork is by Del Borovic, who can be found at delborovic.com. Our theme songs are Core Collapse and Sanctuary of the Sky Gods by Nathaniel Yavern, and our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. Now I'm off to do future things before we return for the next episode of... Dum Dums and Dragons 2099 Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time Christian Manicola, Long Long, Jason Denson, James Quayar, DM Rob, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you. <laughs>